Hello, my name is Erica and I am on the Teacher Next Door team. I am here to deliver a highly requested video, which is a complete review of all of the Teacher Next Door resources. Now, if you are familiar with Teacher Next Door resources, you know that there are over 500 of them in the shop. That's a lot of resources to go through and that's a lot of resources that could possibly meet your needs in your classroom. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about today is how to sequence all of these resources within your reading block. So you're gonna hear about these resources, where they can fit into your reading block and what parts of your curriculum they can help support. Now, we're going to start out with very, very, very basic foundations of reading. Now, the first resource we're going to talk about is the Reading Workshop Complete Kit. But if you don't use a reading workshop model within your classroom, do not fret because this complete kit can help support any upper elementary reading block. Let's take a look at what's on the inside of this resource. Now this reading workshop complete kit comes with five resources. The reason why it is labeled a reading workshop complete kit is because it does come with a launch resource. This comes with the first four weeks of lesson plans for reading workshop to help get your workshop up and off the ground. So every procedure and expectation that you are going to set for reading workshop is included in this bundle. However, again, if you do not use a reading workshop model in your classroom, do not fret because that is just one of the five components of this resource. Let's talk about the other four. So as you can see on your screen here, this also contains everything you will need for reading conferences. So if you are meeting one-on-one -on -one or even with a group of students who are reading, everything you could possibly dream of for reading conferences is included in this kit. You're talking about everything from your reader's notebook, setting expectations, anchor charts, question stems, things that you can ask your students when conferencing with them, because conferencing is not easy in upper elementary when you have 30 kids in your classroom and it's probably not likely that you've read every single book that those kids are reading. So everything you can dream of for conferences is included in this complete kit. Now, another thing that's included in here are the anchor charts. We are talking anchor charts that cover every single reading standard from third grade, fourth grade, and fifth grade. The reason why we've included all three grade levels within this complete kit is because as you already know, in upper elementary, the learning gaps are quite massive and after virtual learning and after COVID, those gaps have grown even further. So if you teach fifth grade, it is very likely that you may need some third grade resources to help support those students who need a little bit more scaffolding to get where they need to be. That is the reason why third, fourth, and fifth grade resources are all included in this kit. You are able to differentiate with ease with this kit. Same thing can be said if you look at the bottom left corner of this um, complete kit right here, where you can see that the graphic organizers are also included in here for you. These are graphic organizers for all reading standards and all reading skills for third, fourth, and fifth grade. The nice thing about the anchor charts, I'm going to go back for that to that for a second. The nice thing about the anchor charts is that you have pre-filled anchor charts, and then you also have anchor charts that are blank. So if you are creating these anchor charts with your students, you can give your students the blank copy, and they can work along with you and record on their own personal anchor charts what you are recording and what you are going to hang up on your wall as an anchor chart. Now, obviously, the graphic organizers lend their hands to that very, very nicely as they are blank. You can use these with any passage, any story, any book, and they are all available to you in there. The next thing I want to add in here are the question stems. I love to use this resource as something that I can hand off to a aid that may be in my classroom or to a substitute that may be in my classroom. Those aids and substitutes aren't always abreast to what you are learning and what you are teaching within your classroom. But if they walk in and you can hand them a set of question stems that's kind of on a binder ring that is travelable, travelable with them, they are able to hit that standard without needing to conference with you quickly before they go work with students. So if you set up this routine for any guests that may be in your classroom, again, be it a substitute or an aide, reading specialist, reading interventionist, if you can hand that off, you can assure that you are hitting those standards with those students, even though it's not you working with those students, it is someone else within your classroom. Love that resource just specifically for that purpose, handing it off to you guys. And, and quite frankly, if you are new to a grade level, those are great to lean on because if you're getting used to the standards, all you need to do is print off those question stems and you can have them on the binder ring or you can have them on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and you can make sure that you are aligning to those skills and those specific standards. Now, 
Now, everything within this kit is completely print and digital. You can use it in Google Slides. You can use it as a printable version, totally up to you. And this will provide you with year long support. So if you have a curriculum that is subpar and I have been there, I've definitely been there when my curriculum does not support the standards that I need to hit. This is your go to. This is going to lay the foundation for everything that you need. You're going to have every anchor chart for the entire year, every graphic organizer you can think of, all of your question stems that hit those standards, every reading conference material, and the first 20 days of lesson plans if you use a reading workshop model. So setting those expectations and those procedures are is a breeze with this resource. All right, on to the next one. So there we've got our foundational unit, which is the Reading Workshop Complete Kit again. And now we're gonna talk about differentiation. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because we've already talked about the ability levels within our classroom and how they've grown since COVID has affected learning. And we're gonna, we're gonna keep seeing that for probably the next, what, handful of years, I would say. So how do we address the huge ability level gaps within our upper elementary classroom without pouring over hours of data without assessing our students to death because we are not in the business of sitting a student down and having them take a 40 minute assessment so we can figure out what they need and when they need it. So here's what we do instead. We have third, fourth, and fifth grade bundles of assessments. Now these are mini assessments. These are short, small snapshots of where a student is with a skill that particular day. So if you are familiar with benchmarking in upper elementary, you're likely giving a student some sort of standardized assessment in fall, in winter, and then in spring. And then you're using that data to either drive instruction or track growth or handing it over to the state or you're giving it to your principal. But what about all of the instruction that takes place in between fall, winter, and spring? The students aren't necessarily staying at those standard places each and every day, right? So how do we serve students with what they need that's standards aligned throughout the week without just relying on one set of data and without making them sit in front of a computer or an assessment for 40 minutes? Well, that is a need that I personally had it within my classroom. We were a standards-based grading school, so I knew that I needed to figure out where my students were with each particular standard. And how was I going to do that? Because I was searching on Sunday nights for hours and hours and hours for assessments or creating them myself. So, and then we heard from other teachers in other districts that this was a similar happenstance. So we thought to ourselves, how do we provide that snapshot of data that can drive our instruction? We can serve the students who are not at a proficiency level with these standards, with the instruction that they need in small groups. And then we can enrich the students who have already mastered this skill and we can take them to the next level. Again, these are small snapshot assessments. Let's take a look at what's on the inside here. They are print and digital. Best thing about these is that the digital version is self-grading. It is in Google Forms. So if you give your students the short snapshot assessment, it's gonna spit data out to you instantaneously. So you do not need to spend time grading. You can just open up the Google Sheets where your data goes, sort by lowest score to highest score, and then you can pull those students who are scoring the lowest immediately after they take this assessment so that you can begin scaffolding instruction for them off the bat without having to wait for any other data. And then you can also grab the students who scored the highest, and then you can have an enrichment activity or a leveling up activity for them ready to go. And then the students who are right there in the middle, they're going to receive the core instruction because you're going to keep teaching at this point. So the best thing about this too is that there are three assessments per skill or per standard. So what we do is we give an assessment before instruction even happens. We give a short snapshot assessment, see where everybody is, see where the baseline is. Then we can pull those students who need that support as we're teaching, so then we teach our lesson. And we know that we're gonna pull our students who scored the lowest because they are gonna not only need core instruction, but they're gonna need small group instruction too. So I am ready to go with my next activity and I'm gonna pull those students because I know, all right, you five, I know that I've got a support you so we're working together today and then midweek once we're halfway through with our instruction we give the second assessment because that's going to allow us to track growth from the first assessment before instruction happened to the middle of instruction to see if our students are growing now oftentimes when i give that second assessment if i've pulled those small groups a lot of my kids who i've worked with in small group are ready to work at just core instruction because they received that support that they needed off the bat now the students who are still scoring low on those assessments at the 
mid assessment, I'm going to continue to keep working with in small group. And then obviously, as you can see, there is a third assessment. That assessment is given post instruction. So when all of the instruction has been delivered, we're going to also post assess. So anyone who is still scoring low on that post assessment, I know that that is still a skill that those students need to work on as we spiral review throughout the year. And hopefully my students are able to see their own growth as they progress through the learning level. The thing I like about that is that it kind of promotes a growth mindset naturally without having to coach kids through it because they're metacognitively thinking through the process of, oh, hey, that was hard before I received, you know, I learned my lesson with my whole group. Um, with my students sitting around or my classmates sitting around me and then I worked with Mrs. K at the table and then I worked on this particular skill and then I grew and grew and grew and they're able to visually see their own growth. Again, snapshot data, it instantaneously promotes differentiation in your classroom and <laughs> honestly one of the best things about that is that you can bring it to any data meetings or any PLCs that you have and then you have actual data that supports any inklings you may have about a student who may be struggling with a certain standard or a certain skill and it's great to have that documentation from this resource as well so that is the second thing that i would introduce into my reading block because it is given before instruction that is the first thing that the first type of um, actionable resource that i would include within my reading block so first thing assessment so we've got our foundational skills with the reading workshop complete kit all of our anchor charts and graphic organizers to support learning but how do i figure out who needs what that is with these assessments right here the next thing that i would introduce into my classroom would be the reading bundles now these are great for people who do not have reading curriculums and believe it or not there are so many teachers who come to us and say we don't have anything to teach off of i'm new to this grade level or i'm new to this school and we have nothing what do I do? If that is you, or if you have a reading curriculum that really needs to be supplemented, these are my, my biggest suggestion. These reading bundles are enormous. They are so huge and so big. Now you can see all of the different resources that are included within each bundle. I'm not going to go through all of them, but they are printable and digital. They're massive units. They are able to teach the skill. So you have enough resources to teach the skill. You have enough resources to have students practice the skills independently. And then you also have enough to reteach those skills if you are spiraling instruction throughout the year. They do come with 10 core comprehension units. As you can see, they are just chock full of everything you could possibly dream of to teach. All right, next thing. Now we've got the digital reading bundle. So now these are separate units, completely different, all original content in these bundles, and they were specifically designed with digital use in mind. So there are not printable components to this. Usually when you purchase something on TPT or from the Teacher Next Door shop, it comes with a printable version. These do not come with printable versions because they are solely and specifically made to be used on tablets or computers. If you are a Google Classroom school, these are the units for you. Now, these all come with independent practice. All of these units, they will hit your standards. If you are a Common Core school, these will hit all of your standards. If you are not Common Core, we have plenty of people from Texas who use TEKS, who have their, or another state who uses, who use their own set of standards, usually which wind up being um, based off of Common Core. But we've had plenty of teachers who do not teach using Common Core, using these resources in their classroom um, because they're geared specifically toward upper elementary reading skills they lend their hand nicely to anyone and everyone who teaches grades three four and five now these are skill focused what i like about these is that it will give you a passage it will give you comprehension questions vocabulary questions and then specific skill aligned questions so say you are teaching text structures you're going to have a comprehension component a vocab component and then you're also going to have a text structures focused component in there the nice thing about that is that if you are working on text structures, you can hand that activity off to students or work in small group with students on that particular activity. And then they have something to work on independently when they leave your small group because they also have the comprehension and vocabulary component because we know how important those are to core instruction in upper elementary. So again, those are specifically digital. They are different than the original reading bundles because they just come with a digital component. The one thing I will say about this is that if you have accommodations for a student who has an IEP or a 504, or you just have a student who really um, 
either struggles using a tablet or a computer, or in my case, if you've had a student who has had their tablet taken away from them, because we know that that happens up for our elementary, um, you can print these off and you can, they obviously won't have the drag and drop features that are available in the digital component, but you can just hit file print from the Google Slides and they will print off on a regular eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, and you have that option as well. They were just not created with that in mind, but I have used that personally in my own classroom. Like I said, when a student has lost privileges to their tablet. All right, next one we've got here, our reading center. So you've taught your whole lesson. You are working in small group with students. Now, what are all my other students doing while I'm working with a small group? I wanna do reading centers in my classroom, but I just don't have enough resources. Planning for them takes forever because I'm searching high and low for all types of resources to hit the standards and the skill that we're working on. Well, we've got a whole bundle of reading centers specifically created for this purpose so you can work in small group with your students and your other students can be engaged and still learning and not doing busy work so these are standards aligned again let's talk a little bit about these they come with three different formats so there is a printable format of reading centers where it is interactive there's usually a game board involved or some sort of um, puzzle pieces that students can put together so that tactile like feeling of reading centers there are those those obviously do take a little bit of prep. The nice thing about it is you have to prep it once and that's it, but they do take prep for the printable version. If you are not into printing and laminating things, don't worry, there are two more versions for you as well. So there's a Google Forms version where a student will get a Google Forms. There is a multiple choice question for them. Um, there are several different formats of those that, that are still aligned and then it will spit out the data to you, obviously, because you can see their score. One of the coolest components about these reading centers though is the third format, which is called an interactive PDF. This is really similar to Boom Cards if you're familiar with that, but you don't need a Boom account or anything to use this. So if you can share a PDF with a student on a tablet or a device, you can use these. So the student is going to open up the PDF and then the PDF is interactive. So they're gonna see directions, they're gonna click start and it's gonna take them to their first question. They're gonna read the question, they're gonna see three answers down on the bottom. They're going to click or tap one of the three answers and then the interactive PDF will tell them instantaneous feedback. So it'll say, oh, I'm sorry, that answer was not correct or congratulations, you get to move on to the next question. So it is interactive and delivering instantaneous feedback to them. It's fun. It's interactive. They are one of my favorite components. We have students who like beg <laughs> to use these all the time. So again, interactive, get instantaneous feedback, 20 skill aligned centers. You don't have to recreate the wheel every Sunday night and look for reading centers. If students have these, they know the routine, they've got it down. One of the best investments for your classroom because you will have them for years to come in multiple different formats. And God forbid we ever need to teach virtually again, you've got everything digitally and in print for you at your fingertips. All right, next resource we've got here. We've got our free pacing guide. So all of these resources here that we just kind of overviewed, all of these resources are linked based upon the standards that they hit in the free pacing guide. So if you want a print version of this, say, and you wanna go and find, all right, I'm teaching main idea next week. All right, I'm gonna find main idea. I've gotta see what resources from the teacher next door hit the main idea standard. This PDF is all linked. So all of the links to all of the resources are in this PDF. All you have to do is find main idea, click the link and you will find all of the main idea resources that will hit that standard along with any blogs that will support that standard. So if you're unfamiliar with that standard or you want some teaching ideas on that standard, the blogs are linked in there for you as well that have a tons of free tips and ideas, even freebies linked in there. Everything you can need for your grade level is linked within this pacing guide. There is also an editable pacing guide. So if you are not, um, or if your curriculum goes upon a different skeleton plan than the suggested pacing guide here from the teacher next door, you can use the editable version to create your own pacing guide. Again, you can use all of the links and all of the resources that are in there for you. It is full of everything you could dream of for upper elementary reading instruction. So again, that's available for third, fourth, and fifth grade. There is the suggested version from the teacher next door that we have created. And then there is an editable version if you go off of a different skeleton plan with your district or with your school. It links to all of the teacher next door resources in that resource for you. They are standards focused, they are skilled focused. So you can grab anything that you need to meet any 
need that you have in your classroom. And again, you can access third, fourth, and fifth grade. So if you need that differentiation, if you teach fifth grade, but you've got to scaffold back to third grade, you're going to have access to all three grade levels so you can meet those diverse needs in your classroom. Hopefully this video was very helpful and hopefully it overviewed everything you could think of from the Teacher Next Door shop. I know there are plenty of resources and it can be kind of overwhelming when you're looking through 500 of them. So if you have any questions whatsoever, you can always hit the contact button at the top of the Teacher Next Door shop. That will email us and we can get back to you and answer any questions that you may have.